I'm standing in the sanctuary of Mackay United Church in front of a plaque which is a memorial to the 19 men from Mackay Presbyterian Church who perished in what was then called the Great War. This plaque, as this small brass insert notes, was unveiled by the Prince of Wales in 1919, one year after the end of that war. As you may know, for six years I have been researching the lives of these Mackay fallen. Each year I have attempted, in our Remembrance Sunday service, to bring them to life, not only as fallen soldiers, but as men who lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved, and were loved. But the stories I've told are not only those of soldiers, but of families, of a church, and of a community that watched and waited through a long and terrible war that, that exacted a far greater toll than anyone could ever have imagined. 140 men and one nursing sister out of a congregation of some 500 enlisted in this war. Not a family in the congregation was untouched. Many of those who returned carried scars, shrapnel, injuries, disabilities, mental trauma, and haunting memories for the rest of their lives. Yet as this plaque makes clear, the church never doubted the rightness of the cause or the value of the sacrifice. Note how the symbolism of nature, of, of nation, empire, and religion are combined. At the top is the Canadian coat of arms, uh, capped with a crown. And the border is alternating maple leaves and thistles. And the inscription says that the war had been fought in defense of justice, truth, and righteousness, and for the glory of God. The biblical quotation at the bottom, as dying and behold we live, expresses the faith that those who fell would have eternal life. The hymns sung in remembrance services, unto the hills, O God our help in ages past, and O valiant hearts, reflected their continuing conviction that the war had been just, that the men had done God's work, and that God was present and watching over his people even as they wept for their dead. After the war, the veterans and their families struggled to return to a normal life or to start a new one, raising families, buying houses, launching businesses or careers. Mackay Presbyterian became Mackay United Church. But the congregation remembered. For many years, this plaque and the one on the other side of the church that listed those who served were draped in silk flags made by one of the ladies of the congregation. Armistice Day became an annual com uh, a commemoration in churches and at war memorials across Canada, in every town and city, and across the British Empire. The Great War was a defining experience for our nation, a searing ordeal for our forebears and a harsh trial for their faith. Time altered the memory of the war and of the men who fought in it. But November the 11th, the day it ended, has continued for over a century to be the day we set aside to honor all those who served and sacrificed in all our wars and to renew the wish so earnestly expressed on that day that this would be the last of all wars. Of course, it didn't work out that way. Within 20 years, more Mackay men and women, 189 in all, would volunteer to serve in World War II. These included many old Mackay families, sons and daughters of veterans, as well as servicemen and women from elsewhere who joined the church during the war. Over here, to my right, if you can't quite see, uh, from here is a plaque honoring the six men from Mackay United Church who fell in the Second World War. Two of these men died on active service in Ottawa. Three perished in Royal Canadian Air Force squadrons based in England. One was killed liberating the Netherlands. But there are striking differences between these two plaques. Besides the mercifully smaller number of dead on the second one, the World War II plaque is plain, decorated only by the crest of the United Church. And rather than a verse from the Bible, it has a quotation from John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. So he passed over and all the trumpets sounded from the other side. And I would draw your attention to another important point about this plaque, which you can't really see from here, 
and that is that its primary purpose is not to honor the dead alone, but to mark the dedication of an organ in the church to the glory of God and in loving memory of the fallen men. And in fact, the most significant memorial to these men in this church is not a plaque or an organ, but a building. Six years after the war, Mackay United Church constructed a large addition to the church to provide Sunday school meeting rooms and a large multi-purpose hall. It was named Memorial Hall in memory of those whose labors made it possible for us to worship here and in remembrance from those who went forth from this church in two world wars that we might continue to worship here in peace. Why the difference between the two memorials? After the Second World War, as Tim put, Cook points out in his excellent new book, The Fight for History, there was a great debate in Canada as to how to honor those who had given their lives. The country was full of, of memorials to the fallen from the Great War. Should another group of similar memorials be constructed for the second? There was no doubt anywhere that this had been a, a necessary war, a war to rid the world of a great evil. But paradoxically, or perhaps because of this, the sentiment prevailed that its memorials should not be cold, lifeless monuments or cenotaphs, but utilitarian spaces, hospitals, parks, arenas, libraries, galleries, churches, schools, that would embody what the men and women had fought for, that would be living daily reminders of their sacrifice, that would look to the promise of the future rather than to the tragedy of the past. So it was at Mackay. The church organ has been replaced, but the memorial hall is still at the heart of our church. It has become an important hub for community activities and it remains the focal point of our ongoing engagement with the community. As we continue the mission of our church in the world, we should pause from time to time to reflect on what the title of that hall means and who and what we are remembering. These memorials are examples of how time alters all memories and rewrites historical narratives but they also bear witness to an inescapable reality. Each generation is called to service in defense of our values and our ideals. It may be a call to military service as in two world wars or like that of our brave peacekeepers and warriors in places like Europe, Korea, Cyprus, Bosnia and Afghanistan, at sea or in the air. Or it may be a call to serve, perhaps with risk and even sacrifice, as aid workers, journalists, diplomats, educators, first responders, healthcare workers, and the many thousands of others working to combat disease, prejudice, and ignorance, inspire the young, or bring peace, pr prosperity, and justice to a troubled world. The challenge and the call changes with each generation, but the pledge remains the same. And those who sat in these pews have renewed it every year for over a century to strive for justice, truth, and righteousness, and for the glory of God, and to remember.